All right, um, we are going to learn about partial derivatives today. Um, they're actually a topic from uh, multivariable calculus, um, but they kind of they kind of squeeze their way into differential equations in this one little spot right here. This is the only spot where we have to worry about any multivariable. Um, you don't have to worry too much about it. It's, I think it's really simple once you see it. Um, you could do a lot of other stuff with it, and they can become a lot more complicated, but for our purposes... I think that this should be pretty chill for all of you. So um, your anti-set right here is to um, take the derivative with respect to x, just find the derivative of each of these functions, y1, y2, y3, and the one at the end, just y. So find the derivative of each of these. Pause and do it. Okay, so hopefully you agree with me in red there. Um, this one derives to 10 cosine x. This one, there's a tiny bit of chain rule. So I got to do 4 times the 7. And then I got e to the 7x. Uh, here I do th uh, 3 times 5. That gives me 15x squared. And this one, uh, I multiply the a by 3 for my power rule. I get 3ax squared plus 2. 2 comes from power rule, bx. Um, so hopefully you're good with that. And um, I'm going to show you something in a moment. Actually, before I go on, um, what I would like to say with each of these is that um, we are deal we were dealing with in each of these above. Uh, y was a function of x; it had one input, right? So when I take its derivative, I am deriving with respect to x, right? Which gives me uh, dy dx, and we often write that as f prime of x or y prime, right? So the question becomes, what if we have um, more than one variable here as our input, right? Um, and I will show you that in the next bit. Okay, so um, as I said, now we're going to have z, that's our third variable, is a function of both x and y. Um, I'll draw it for you visually. There's multiple ways that we can draw this ax these axes. This is the x, the y, and the z. This is the more standard way to do it, at least in math. Um, this comes out of the board. This is here. This is he this, this goes out to the right, and this goes vertically in the board. Um, the reason why we do it this way is um, this is the positive x, positive y, positive z. If I were to somehow like turn this thing and look straight down the z, then the y would be vertical, the positive y would be vertical, and the positive x would be like that. That makes it so that it's set up in the way that we're used to having it set up. If I, everyone wants to put the x here, which is the natural place to put it, but if we did that and we looked directly at the x, then it, it wouldn't give me x and y oriented in the same way that they normally are. Uh, this is called a right-hand system, although it doesn't really matter for where we're going, but I wanted you to see how they're graphed. Um, uh, what I want you to see is that um, there are two ways sorry, there are two ways to think about the derivative. Um, I can uh, find the x derivative of this thing and I can find the y derivative of this thing. In fact, there's more than just two ways, but for our, um, there's actually an infinite number of ways, um, but um, for our purposes, um, we are just going to think about the two most obvious ways. What would be the derivative with respect to x of something, and what would be the derivative with respect to y? So if I've got a function, z equals f of x comma y, um, then uh, we say that, oops, that f sub x, that's my notation to say, and this is going to look weird, it looks like a d, but it's not. Um, that is partial, partial x of f of x comma y is the correct way to say it. So it's the partial derivative with respect to x of f of x comma y. Um, another way that you'll see it is um, it's partial f, partial x. Um, it's not a d. It looks like a d. It's kind of like a curled d. 
um, of all the ones that I've written here, I feel like that one looks the best. Um, but you could just use this notation, f sub x. So what would the other one be? It would be f sub y, and that would be partial partial y of f of x comma y, which I could also write as partial f partial y. You can imagine if I had three variables, four variables, eight variables as my input, then I would have that many different partial derivatives. Okay, so let's, um, let's go ahead and do some. So let's take f of x comma y equal to um, 10x cubed plus y squared x squared plus sine of y. Now, um, they, this would normally be written, these, oops, um, these two would be switched. Normally you would write x squared y squared because um, uh, it's just like standard to write it with alph in alphabetical term, but whatever, they mean the same thing. So um, what I want to do here is um, find f sub x. And that means I'm going to take the derivative um, of everything with respect to x. You may say, what about the y? Well, well actually, let's do the first term. You should agree with me that um, the first term is going to be 30x squared. Now, um, the question is, what happens to this thing? Well, the reason why I had you do these guys earlier was because um, the 10 here, it was a constant, right? So I just did sine's derivative, and I multiplied it by the 10. Um, the 4 here, it was a constant. I did e to the 7x's derivative and multiplied it by 4. This constant. So let's flip forward. This thing, you are just going to treat this as a constant, right? We are not going to change y at all. Um, we could go into a long explanation of what that means, but the operation itself is really simple. Um, if I treat y as a constant, well, what's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x uh, to x. And then um, uh, when, oops, undo, when I treat that y as a constant, then, or that y squared as a constant, I just get my y squared here. Um, this is the derivative with respect to x, and this is just a constant, just like, um, what colors did I use? Uh, it's not going to work. This was the derivative with respect to x, and this was the constant, right? So it just came along, and this piece got derived. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then you should see maybe what to do with the next thing, um, with that sine y. Um, really, the, the answer to the question is, how does sine of y change as we change x? Well, the answer is it doesn't change. So what's its derivative with respect to x? It is zero. So um, we get plus nothing from the derivative of sine of y. Um, that is uh, the partial uh, derivative of that thing with respect to x. So... Um, I would like you to try to find the partial derivative with respect to y. Please pause and write it, and then I will go ahead and do it for you. Okay, so um, the 10x cubed, well here I treat y as a, con sorry, I treat x as a constant. So 10 times x cubed, well that's still just a constant. This is not changing with respect to y. So its derivative is 0 plus what's the derivative of y squared? It's, um, oops, it's 2y, and then the x squared is a constant, so I get times x squared, um, and then I get what's the derivative of sine y? It is uh, plus cosine of y. And when I say what's the derivative, I mean what's the derivative with respect to y? Um, so you might rewrite this as 2x squared y um, plus cosine of y because um, uh, the we would like to do it alphabetically. Anyway, hopefully you understand what a partial derivative is. Um, from here, we're going to do some, quote, board work.